Where's your Where's your uh, Collins? Where's your Collins hat? You, I gave you a hat yesterday. Where is it? You're the guy that gave me the hat back and said, "My hat broke. Can I get another one?" It did. After you broke the hat. It's at the condo. <laughs> All right, you want to be on? What's your name? Harrison. Where are you from? Virginia. Where in Virginia? Mattapanai. Harrison got it. Mattapanai? It's near, it's right next to us. We've had enough of you. <laughs> you've, had, you've had all the airtime you're getting this week. You're not getting any more. You want to be on? You don't look happy. What's wrong? What's wrong? Did, did, they, not, look up, look up. did they not give you ice cream? <laughs> he looks really unhappy. Wow. Really unhappy. All right, these guys want to be on. You know you're on Big Rock TV. We've had a million viewers this week. All right, okay. You're begging to be on. You better be good. I'm Brooke. Where are you from? Frogsboro. Robsboro? Frogsboro. Frogsboro? <laughs> Never heard of it. I'm Sandy from where, Vermont. Where, you're from where? Vermont. Vermont, wow. Do you guys have any Blue Marlin in Vermont? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, what's your name? My name is Tinsley. What? Tinsley. Where are you from, Tinsley? New Hampshire. New Hampshire, wow. How about you? Maddox. Where are you from? North Carolina. Well, thank goodness for that. We have an Alaska. We have an Alaska? Oh, my goodness. Hello. Where do you live in Alaska? Oh, no kidding. You know Sarah Palin? Yeah. Do you hang out? No. <laughs> All right, well, hang on, everybody. This. Oh, okay. Got a couple that want to be on. I missed you guys. I'm sorry. What's your name? Mason. Where are you from? Johnston County. Johnston County. <laughs> Macon from Joko. He's from Joko. What's your name? Preston. What? Preston. Preston. Where are you from? Uh, oh, my goodness. Apex. All right. What's your name? Max. Max. Where are you from, Max? North Carolina, Wilmington. North Carolina, Wilmington. Okay. I know where that is. All right. You guys having fun? All right. One more. Come in. Oh, he's shying away. I can get down there, too. <laughs> he's not going to do it. All right. I told you, you've been on all you're going to be on this week. You didn't bring the hat. I gave you a hat yesterday, and you didn't wear it today, so you're in the doghouse. You better wear it tomorrow. Mr. Collins wants you to wear it tomorrow. All right, this fish is on the way. We hear it's close, Tommy. You're exactly right, Henry. Let's, uh, let's check this one more time. This is the sushi. Captain Charlie Pereira, a 57-foot island boat works from right up the beach here. Maybe 500 pounds. Let's hope so. What's the word, George? Tell him that if nobody wins this, it carries over to next year. Interesting. Yeah, Curtis has reminded me that uh, if nobody wins this 500-pound prize of $739,500, it will roll over into next year. Could, could you imagine? And you know what? Could you imagine them being fishing next year? That happens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there would be 400 boats here entered in that category. I'm take my John I mean, it, boat it'd be, out there. it'd be there'd be two million dollars <laughs> available with uh, more entries. How about it? Anyway, we do hope uh, we do hope to give it away. It would be fun to have it roll over, but nonetheless, we do hope we give it away. Maybe Charlie and the crew on the sushi. It will be their day. So let's get ready to welcome them here to Big Rock Landing.
Let me make it just a quick public address announcement. The Big Rock Tournament has a drone flying uh, over the channel. And uh, if when we're trying to get footage of the sushi and other boats when they come in, uh, if you're flying a drone out here, would you would you mind landing your drone so we can fly our drone and see our boats so we can broadcast them to uh, our viewers around the world? If you, if you don't mind, I don't know if you can hear me. If you're flying a drone, bring it bring it home for just a second. Let our guys get their drone up uh, so we can fly our drone safely and see uh, our participants as they come down the channel. Thank you. All right, how many out there think this is going to go 500? How many out there? How many hope it goes 500? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right, Big Rock fans, here comes the sushi. You can see it right over here by the big screen. You see the uh, outriggers coming up. That's our guy right there. We got the Coast Guard and the Moorhead City Police Department out there clearing the way. A little fun fact, the Moorhead City Police Department in a boat provided by the Big Rock Tournament. Okay, there is Captain Charlie Pereira. The crew of the Sushi, a 57 Island Boat Works. Right there you see Oregon Inlet on the stern.
All right, let's let Captain Charlie and the crew of the sushi hear it here. Welcome them to Big Rock Landing. Let's try that again, a little bit uh, more energy this time. There you go. That's more, that's more like it. All right, for those of you that haven't seen this before or don't know what's going on, uh, we're going to get the boat tied up and get it secured here in the uh, way station slip. And we've got two waymasters, George and Randy. They're going to ask permission to get on the boat and take care of a little paperwork. There's got to be a HMS permit on board. They'll take some measurements and uh, get ready to pick it up. Let's go have a look, shall we? For those of you watching on the uh, big screen and at home, crew's got this wrapped up in a blue marlin, an insulated blanket, trying to preserve its weight. And it is all bundled up in there. Great shot right here on Big Rock TV over on the, uh, over on the big screen. I've done this before. All right, guys, we've uh, done a little paperwork there. And uh, Randy and George are getting ready to do their thing. We got a couple of big boys here to help. While we're waiting here, just a quick check on the leaderboard. 459 is third place. 467 on the Sea Toy in second place. And in first place, caught on Monday, the Sea Student, 470.2 pounds. Okay, here we go. All right, let's encourage our boys here. There you go. A beautiful blue marlin right here on day five. Again, we're looking for 500 pounds. We will write them a check right here on the spot for $739,000. Come on, Randy, come on. Ready? Yep. Ready? All right, Charlie, here we go. 484. Yeah! 
All right, guys. How about it? 484 pounds. We have a new leader. There you go. That is the electricity we've been looking for from our crowd here at Big Rock Landing. Bumps the sea toy, I mean, excuse me, the sea student out of first place. Guys, you're looking at right now a $2,769,000 payday. Yeah, that, that, that's enough to cheer about, I agree. What, what a moment that was in the cockpit of the sushi. Obviously a very happy crew. We're gonna take some pictures here. Y'all enjoy the moment as we do too. And we'll hear from our, uh, our happy crew members here in just a minute. Charlie, let me get you right now. I got Captain Charles Pereira. Pereira. Uh, Randy uh, Ramsey yeah. told me you can tell a fish story. Let me have uh, it. Yeah, this one is, uh, we, uh, we've been fishing inshore and we decided to go, uh, go way offshore this time and uh, used, uh, you know, I'm an aeronautical engineer, so I pulled out all the data stops on this one and uh, found a data point and uh, ran to the data point, got the bite. and. Uh, we practiced everything in the cockpit yesterday for about an hour, went over everything with all the anglers because we got some new anglers and uh, everybody's duties, how the reels work, how the gaffs work, how everything works to clear everything. Sometimes you just got to get away from the crowd, don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I, I don't like fishing in a crowd. And uh, so I, I got a new sonar last, the Simrad SY50 Omni sonar. And uh, we, got, we got one sonar mark and uh, I, had, I had Mr. Chad downstairs doing the sonar work right here and he called out he called out mark mark and uh, i turned on the mark got her under the boat she bit our short rigger immediately and uh we went to work and uh we almost lost her uh 
when the angler accidentally uh, slapped the uh, drag into free spool, and uh, we got we got a we got a bird's nest, but I just told him to crank, 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 and I backed down through the bird's nest, and uh, we got the fish, and God is great. Uh, thank you, my my beautiful first daughter in heaven. She died in 2010, and I prayed to her that she would help help make the weight. And uh, she's always looking over me. We won the White Marlin Open two years ago, and I did the same thing. And she's my baby girl in heaven. Well, she's looking down on you right now, isn't she? Yeah. You were in the cockpit earlier when they get ready to weigh. What were you doing? Praying. Good telling, for you. Telling her how much I love her. Well, congratulations. You've taken over first place in this year's Big Rock. Thank Go you. take a picture. Yeah, Thanks. Gotcha, gotcha. As I tell you, a lot of excitement down here and well-deserved, but this is what it's really all about here. Everybody, all the family members are here. We heard it a couple of days ago. Todd Dickerson said the Big Rock is the place to be, and I think this, is, uh, this proves that the Big Rock is the place to be. You got guys in a... You get, you get everybody and their family in here, and uh, that's just what the Big Rock is all about. Obviously, big fish, a lot of money, but there's uh, that great feeling of family and community that we embrace heartily every day and every year. And, of course, no different here on the 65th annual record-breaking Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. So. Curtis is going to talk to our angler here in a second. I'm going to get Charlie and get him to talk to the local media here, hopefully if I can pry him away. But stay with us. Certainly there's more to come here uh, as day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament rolls on.
no matter who asks the question, look right at this young lady right here. Yes, oh. ma'am. All right. What can I do for you? Hey, first of all, let's get the correct spelling and pronunciation of your name. I'm Charlie Pereira. I'm Cuban. It's P-E-R-E-I-R-A. And uh, Castro took everything from our family, and uh, we showed up with nothing and uh, built it into something uh, that God has blessed us with. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, I tried, lost our first daughter at 10 months of age in a nanny neglect accident. And, uh, uh, didn't think I was ever going to fish again because I was fishing when it happened and uh, told my boat broker to sell the boat, told the realtor to sell everything. I was just going to make babies and take care of babies from that point on. And Nobody sold anything. They told me that I would be back, that they knew it. And uh, so 2013, I finished the new boat and uh, started fishing. And uh, we've been blessed since then. We've uh, won portions of the White Marlin Open and then all of the White Marlin Open and uh, the Ocean City Tuna Tournament, portions of the Mid-Atlantic most of them won the Ocean City Tuna Tournament. Uh, this Island Bow Works 57 has been an amazing, an amazing beast. Uh, she tops out at 48 knots and uh, put the tabs down. She gets me where I need to go in pretty much all weather. I thank all my sponsors, Garmin, uh, Caterpillar, ZF Transmissions, you name it. There's dozens and dozens, Huck, Huck Performance Sport Fishing Gear. I got my brand new Costa uh, Tuna Alley's last night from the Costa Boys here in the trailer. So everybody go get your Costas. And uh, this is their first day on the water. They did pretty well for me. Uh, I'm just blessed. I thank God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, just amazing opportunities in life uh, that you're blessed with. And uh, it's your job to take advantage of them and uh, not only do the reading, but actually live it. So uh, I appreciate everything you guys have done for me. And, uh, I got fourth place in Big Rock in 2015, I think it was, and uh, but it's been eluding me, and uh, I pray and hope to God that that we do well in this one. So, uh. what was it like out there today, fishing? Uh, it was a little choppy on the way out. Once we got to the current, it smoothed out, and uh, I checked my currents in several places. Didn't see what I liked. Put it back up on plane, kept it going, and uh, found what I was looking for that I'd seen in the satellites last night, and uh, I had picked out the waypoint in my head last night, and. Uh, found it within a mile or two of where I thought it would be according to the satellite data and uh, started working the break. And uh, Chad, my sonar man, called out the first fish on the sonar downstairs on the 55 inch TV. And uh, I turned on the fish, tracked the fish, got on top of the fish, the fish ate the short rigger. We did our deal like I trained everybody. We did an hour long training session last night in the cockpit at the dock. And uh, cause we got some new anglers and uh, some new mates and uh, it paid off. We had a few little errors, but God saw us through the errors and the, the backlash that we had. And we overcame it and uh, didn't even have to stick the fish. She laid over nice and pretty on the side, and we got a measurement and brought her in the boat. And uh, I, I checked with Randy. It was a little rough coming back. I was doing 27, 28 knots and pounding a little bit, and I checked with Randy to make sure we were the only boat. I didn't want to have to push her up to 48 knots and uh, <laughs> try to get here first. But uh, we didn't make the 500 anyway, so it didn't really matter. But... Um, we're blessed. That's about all I can say. And I thank the Big Rock and Crystal and Madison, uh, everybody that works here. It's amazing. You look at that wall over there, 1957. I was born in 65, and I, I took pictures of everybody on the wall uh, the other night. And, uh, you know, I just thought, you know, that's something to strive for and uh, an amazing tournament. What would it mean to you to have your picture on the wall and your name on the uh, family, Charlie? Uh, I would just feel like it was my, my daughter's doing. She's sitting on my shoulder. So I think about her every day. Captain, when was the so. first moment that you saw the fish? Was it on a jump? Was it was it in the water chasing the bait? <laughs> and how how big did you? She didn't do any jump, but she just crashed the bait and went <laughs> down went down deep and. Uh, you know, she acted like a tuna there a little bit, and my buddy's up, and I fish out of Oregon on that charter boat, and uh, my, one of my buddies, Greg Mayer, today called three giant bluefin tunas up to 106 inches today, and I was like, oh, man. Oh, man, I got a tuna on here. I got a blue marlin, you know, and uh, she rolled up on the side of the boat, and I was, oh, we, we better measure, and we measured her, and she was just over the 110, and uh, so I just prayed the whole way in. I got, I got 100 text messages from all my buddies on the way in, and pretty much my only response was the, the prayer emoji. That was it. <laughs> <laughs>
What, what was that feeling like when you were in that roar of the number of the way? I was praying to my baby girl and God and Jesus, and I just started crying. I just feel like, you know, she's on my shoulder, and I've been through some tough times in life. I lost my right eye when I was five years old and three years of surgeries, and, uh, you know, I just don't ever quit. When I won the White Marlin Open two years ago, <clears throat> it was after we hit something offshore and had to do two days of work on the boat to get her back in the tournament. We ended up winning, and one of the guys that runs the media up there took a picture of my boat and sort of colorized it coming through the inlet with the flag, and... Uh, he put on the bottom of his Facebook post, a winner never stops trying. So uh, I got that hanging on my wall now. So. Well, after through all of that, you get the first place fish. And what is it like for you watching your crew celebrate like that, man? That's got to be a really special feeling. It's a blessing to have, you know, all my employees from my businesses, my, my crew on this. I, I feel, you know, every, every time I feel like it's a blessing and that God brought him into my life for a reason. My new mate, Justin, had some tough times a couple days ago and uh, had to straighten him out on it. And, uh, you know, he almost got thrown off the boat and uh, had a discussion with him and uh, about how he needs to mature and get going with it. And uh, he, uh, he overcame that and came back hard and did an awesome job bringing our baits for us. And uh, Justin Dean, thank you for being a part of our team. Yeah. Is that the gentleman in the white waiter? No. That's Mr. Austin Pierce. He's world famous here. And uh, I don't know what it is, but some they said something this morning about Snapchat. He's got like 700 girls on Snapchat. So. I, I, I'm too old for that. If you do actually end up winning first place, what are you planning to do with money? What are you going to do? Well, same with the White Marlin. I'm going to give, we have a Savannah's Fund, which we started after a 501c3 after my daughter died. We have to do. We had to do IVF in vitro fertilization for all three of our daughters, and uh, so after Savannah died, we didn't have a child making noise in the house anymore. So my grandfather told me, whenever you have problems, go help find somebody else that has bigger problems than you and help them. And uh, we started Savannah's Fund. We give a ten thousand dollar grant every year uh, to help other needy couples that can't afford IVF to have IVF. We've given twelve grants so far, and there's been eleven babies born. Uh, we call them Savannah babies jokingly and so after the White Marlin I gave a chunk of that three we won three and a quarter million in the White Marlin I gave a chunk of that to Savannah's fund and uh, help people have some more babies and if we win any money in this we'll do the same a piece will go to Savannah's fund because she's my she's my love up sitting on Jesus' lap so yeah that's my duty in life is to give my share and uh, we'll give our share to that and uh the clients get. We have a contract. The clients get their percentage, and uh, and I might, I might put some money down on the mo mortgage for the boat. <laughs> 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 so, okay. so, thank, thank you, you guys. So appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Could not have happened to a to a nicer guy than, than Captain Charlie. And words and words of wisdom too. Great great words to live by, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I know you, hey, you got another day left by chance? Yes, sir. Oh, all right, one more day. That 500 pounder awaits. Wouldn't that be something to see uh, Charlie and the crew with the sushi back tomorrow with a 500 pound blue marlin? I've watched it for years and then finally get to pull up and um, you know sometimes you just get lucky you know we went out there today with an open mind we had um, we lost quite a few fish earlier in the week and, and today we kind of started over slate you know and just went fishing and um, you know all of a sudden the rigger popped and she went down never jumped um, just stayed down deep the whole time. Let's back up for let's back up for a minute. So you saw it on the Omni sonar first, right? We did. We did. So we have positions where nice gentleman over there was watching the Omni, and he came busting out of the salon and said, "Omni, Omni, Omni," and everybody, the mates, reached for the pitch baits to try and pitch to him. And before we could do that, she just crashed on it. And um, different than what we had seen earlier in the week, where they were kind of coming up, playing with it, and swimming below. So, um, you know, what can I say? You know, sometimes the stars align. You just get lucky. I will say. <laughs> the staff and the crew here 
at Big Rock has been the most friendly, amazing staff, the dinners, the hospitality, everything. And, you know, I'm just one piece of this machine that we've got behind us, you know, from all the crew that's been working for a week or two just to get us to this point. Um, thank you, guys. And thank you to Charlie for running a great operation and just... It's pretty cool. Not well, you know, it's talking about machines. We certainly have a machine here at the Big Rock that does a hell of a job every year. It's but it wouldn't work without you guys coming and supporting thank us. So thank you so very much. much. Thank Congratulations. You. And, thank hey, you. go get them another one tomorrow. We're going to go try again tomorrow. That's right. Congratulations. Thank you. You want to go talk to the local press? Sure. You got Okay, my name is Justin Riley, J-U-S-T-I-N-R-I-L-E-Y. Uh, I was the angler on the boat today. Uh, I had the fortunate working with and just an amazing crew in the back. Um, Charlie was our captain of the sushi boat. And, um, you know, we just went fishing today. You know, that's what we did. You know, we fished two days earlier in the week. It was rough. It was bumpy. It was bouncy. And, and we had lost some fish. And today we just kind of got everybody together in a group huddle and um, clean slate and just went out fun fishing, basically. And what do you know, you know? It kind of just happened, you know. So how was the fight today? It was hard. You know, sometimes they come up and they jump a bunch and tire themselves out. She just went down, dug deep, and um, it was a stalemate for, for it, what felt like eternity. But, you know, not the longest fight in the world. But, um, you know, Austin, the mate, just did a wonderful job grabbing the fish. Um, he really did. All right, just hold that. I've got the mate on the boat. Uh, we got the mate on the boat, uh, Austin. What's your last name again? Pierce. Pierce. So you're no stranger. There we go. This guy, this is the guy that does all the work right here. Yes, so tell sir. me, uh, so tell me, uh, fish is on. Now what happens? All right, so we basically just started clearing stuff. I made sure that the fish was taken care of, started clearing the lines so we could, Charlie could finally take her out of gear, and then we, um, we just started backing down on the fish. And she, she, she ran off deep right out the gate, and she got us pretty deep down in the back end, but we quickly got it all back. And what was your first uh, idea of the weight of the fish when you first saw it for the first time? Well, at first, I mean, it was a little bit bumpy out there, so it, it was hard to say. I thought she, I knew she was about, she was right there at 400, but like I said, she kept going up under the boat when we were in neutral and everything. Uh, I'm glad she weighed 480. Very nice. Congratulations. And just one other FYI, Austin finished second in 2015 in the Big Rock, so he's no stranger here. Congratulations once again, and go get him tomorrow. I'd love to. I'd also like to thank um, Charlie for the opportunity to let me fly in Sunday and fish, and then also my dad for teaching me how to fish. You got it. That's why we do it, folks. That's why they do it. All right, thank you, thank you, Curtis, and thank you, Austin. Of course, congratulations to Charlie and uh, the entire crew of the sushi. Let's just reset that leaderboard for you real quick while we regroup from uh, a lot of excitement here. You see it hanging up there right now, 484 and a half pounds. That's your leader, obviously, on the sushi. Bumps the C student at 470.2 pounds down into second place. And of course, the C toy now sitting in third, 463.7 pounds. The fabulous Fisherman's Prize uh, still eludes the fleet. And uh, we'll get a quick check of what's going on offshore and be back with you here as Big Rock TV rolls on 
with our coverage of day five of the record-breaking 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. Okay, guys, just a quick public announcement here. If you're driving a silver Volvo Texas X license plate, you need to move your car real quick, please. You're blocking somebody in. So if you're driving a silver Volvo parked across the street near Z&Z Designs, if you would please move your car. Thank you. As we get ready to say goodbye to the sushi, we have news. We have another Blue Marlin in the boat. There you go, on the Chasing A, a 61 Garlington. They are entered in level five, so maybe we will see somebody uh, come in and try to steal that $500, I mean that 500 pound prize in level five, that's $739,000 still available. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on the Chasing A here, their ETA to Big Rock Landing, and anything we know, we'll pass it along to you as quickly as we can. But right now, the story is the sushi. Jumping into first place there in electric fashion. 484 and a half pounds. Beautiful blue marlin. Sitting atop the leaderboard here as fishing on day five has officially come to a close at three o'clock. Lines will be called out of the water in just a couple of minutes. And we'll be back with you with a complete update of today's activities here in just a minute. Those of you who are watching us on Big Rock TV, stay with us here. We've got beautiful shots of the Moorhead City waterfront coming your way. Those of you that are joining us here, enjoy yourselves down here. Lots to do. A lot of our sponsors are here. Of course, you can hit the Big Rock store. Know that everything you buy there, the profits go to charities. Curtis will be with me here for a few more minutes. We'll talk about the day's activities. So stay with us. Enjoy yourselves wherever you are. We'll be with you for the rest of the day as uh, day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament rolls on.
There you go. Good job, Sushi Captain Charlie. Yes, sir. Great job. So let's start with your name and the boat name. John Duffy, fishing aboard the Den Boys this week. And what's the meaning behind the boat name? Big Doug, that owned the boat. Uh, Tommy's father, Tommy Hancock owns the boat. And, uh, Doug always used to, when Tommy and his brother were on the dock, he'd say, where them boys at? So. It's stuck. Start with the boat name. Dirty Martini. And what is the meaning behind this boat name? It's our last name, Chance Martini and Jeff Martini, father-son team. What's the boat name? Which boat? This boat! <laughs> Gamekeeper. What's the meaning behind the boat name? We keep game. What's the name of the boat? Business. What's the meaning behind this boat name? My grandfather, plenty of, many Vikings ago, um, named the boat Business because he'd always go away for work and people would ask where he was and he said, I'm out on business. What's the boat name? Miss Y. And what's the meaning behind that name? Ed Holder owns the boat. Uh, his wife's name is uh, Miss Y, so the, I think this is number five boat for them named the Miss Y. What's your name? My name's Robert McGill. And what is the boat name? The boat name is Safari. Meaning behind the boat? Uh, we're big hunters, and it's just a pretty fitting name for that for us. Biggest superstition for you guys? Well, my son says it's bananas. No bananas on the boat, absolutely. <laughs> well, bananas are bad luck. Of course. Right? A lot of bananas on board? Yeah, bananas are fine. Yeah, you uh, fish the first day and the last day. I try not to be superstitious because that'll worry you to death. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? 101 pound wahoo and then a 400 pound uh, bluefin tuna. We caught a four pound mahi <laughs> on the first day, and that's about it. What's the biggest fish you've caught? Mm, a king mackerel. How big was it? 500 pounds. Wow, that's the biggest king mackerel I've ever heard of. As a captain, it was an 1135 pound blue marlin in Ocean City, Maryland. And what's the biggest fish you've caught? Uh, mine. How much did it weigh? Um, I don't remember. Two, not two pounds. What song gets the crew hyped whenever you guys are out there and you haven't had a bite for a while? Um, any type of uh, reggae music. Either country or rap, so riding dirty. <laughs> that get surprising. <laughs> Not predictable. Paradise City, Guns N' Roses. Walking on the moon by the police. What is your favorite thing about Big Rock? Uh, all of it. What's your favorite thing about Big Rock? Uh, all the hype, just 
been here for so long, the hope that you might be that one this year. And what's your favorite thing about Big Rock? Uh, the chance to catch a big one. I just love the camaraderie, love the, the people. Uh, just having fun, seeing the community, um, going the way in, be on either side of the way in. Um, fishing, just the fishing part. Just, I love being here in Beaufort. I've been fishing this tournament since I was a little kid with my family, and uh, you know, to be able to come down here on a boat that we built and fish is pretty surreal. here with Mr. Terry. Mr. He is a NASCAR is a Hall of Famer. So Terry, I just want to ask you some questions about your career. What is the most memorable race that you've had? You know, probably the most memorable one would be the, the last one I won. Uh, it was in Darlington, South Carolina. And uh, I didn't realize that was going to be the last one I was going to win. Or I would have retired then instead of waiting four years after that. But, uh, Guys, we are back with Chloe on the Welders Arc. They just tagged and released the Blue Marlin that they were hooked up to. So Chloe, tell us about that. Oh, it was incredible. Everything everything went perfectly. Um, I mean, you can see this is a really incredible team that I get to be on board with on the Welders Arc. And they just really have it down perfectly. So uh, Patrick was on the wire. Um, and then Wyatt had grabbed the bill of the fish and we were able to get a tag in it really fast. and then. We were trying to get you back for live while we were swimming it and releasing it, but um, we just missed you. But we saw the fish swimming off strong and it was just a perfect scenario. Awesome. Well, guys, we might have a little bit of that footage. If we do, we'll be sure to uh, share that on our social media and stuff. Chloe and her team at Stanford and the IGFA are doing great work to tag and release these blue marlin. We touched on it um, yesterday and on Saturday too, but the Big Rock is a part of the Great Marlin Race where participants deploy satellite tags on blue marlin that are then tracked as they swim around the world for 240 days. So the last couple tags that were deployed, Loke Seiya in 2021 deployed a tag on a fish during the tournament that ended up going from North Carolina all the way to Cape Verde. And Chloe, can you tell us about the tag that Waste Not deployed last year that just popped off? 
<laughs> yeah, so last year, um, Waste Not had a tag uh, sponsored during the Big Rock tournament, and then they were able to deploy it. You know, sometimes things are a little hectic and you can't deploy it during the Big Rock tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but they were able to deploy that tag um, in August off the coast of Maryland. And then that fish has been one of the most incredible animal migrations we've ever recorded. It swam basically east towards the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and then it swam straight down. And it spent a couple months going right down the middle of the ocean, where it ended up just off the coast of Brazil, south of Rio. And that fish traveled almost 8,000 miles. So the tag that we just deployed will track this fish for 240 days. And I can't wait to see where it goes because these fish off North Carolina, we've really never tagged them with, um, the fish, the marlin off of North Carolina have never been tagged with long-term satellite tags up until the Big Rock started this program with the IGFA in Stanford two years ago. Wow, so that is so incredible, Chloe. And I have to be honest too, after we saw the data from Loke Seas tag a couple years or last year, I was blown away that they went all the way to Africa. And so seeing that this fish went south and headed towards Brazil, and you said went to Rio, I believe, that's incredible. I believe it didn't go like 10 degrees south of the equator or something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and it's cool. I didn't know that, but apparently that's another blue marlin fishing hotspot. So. Wow. And you I remember in the report that we day. read that that fish swam through a blue marlin hotspot. Can you tell us about that and where that is or what you're studying in that location? Um, well, wait, sorry. In which hotspot? Uh, was it in Bermuda maybe or the Bahamas? If I recall. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it did actually go right through there and we do, that's another hotspot tagging location. And we've seen probably the majority of the fish that we tag in the Atlantic end up going to Bermuda at one point or another. That's awesome. Well, we want to give a huge shout out to the Welders Arc and all of the boats that are participating in the Big Rock Great Moreland Race with the IGFA and Stanford University. And Chloe is here from California at Stanford University. She flew in this week for the Big Rock tournament to help get boats uh, some tags and get them deployed on Blue Marlin during the tournament. And this is Chloe's second Blue Marlin tag during both the Lady Angler and now the Big Rock tournament. So we are so excited to see where these fish go. And we want to thank you Dale and John for deploying that tag and being so involved in the conservation methods. Yeah, huge thanks to John Roberts for sponsoring these two tags. Uh, it's cool. He's tagged bluefin tuna with us in the wintertime. He's now tagged two blue marlin off of his boat. Uh, so I have to say this is, and Dale's been doing the tagging for as long as it's been going on. So yeah, it is such a privilege to be on board with the two of them. And Chloe, we haven't even talked about the tuna tagging program. So Chloe is a huge member of the Tag a Giant Foundation, which Big Rock has donated to the past couple years to get bluefin, giant bluefin tuna tagged off of our coast. So Chloe, can you tell us a little bit about the work that the Tag a Giant Foundation does? Yes. So that work started with my advisor, Dr. Barbara Block, in the late 90s off the coast of North Carolina. And it really started um, with Captain Dale Britt and then Captain John Jenkins. And those two boats and those two captains were really the pioneers of our entire tagging program. They tagged, it's been now 2,000 total Atlantic bluefin tuna in the wow. Atlantic. But in those first couple of years, I think they were tagging about 700 fish. Um, That's incredible. It's just such a privilege for me, you know, to have grown up in North Carolina and then get to come back here and tag all of these incredible animals with Dale and to have, you know, the Big Rock support and the entire support of the local community. And we couldn't do it without, without these North Carolina fishermen. Absolutely. So guys, if you see in the Big Rock, we do have a tuna division, but that is for yellowfin tuna. So Chloe and the Tag a Giant Foundation, they tag the giant bluefin tuna. Chloe, how big can those tuna grow? They, I mean, they're called giants for a reason. I can't remember exactly what the IGFA world record is, but it is, I think, over 1,200 pounds. Wow. The ones that we see in North Carolina, I think there are a couple of granders, but um, more often than not, they're probably in the 500 to 800 pound range. That's incredible. I had the opportunity to go along with Chloe and Dale this winter to tag some bluefin tuna. I believe we deployed one tag that day, and it was incredible the work that Chloe and her team from Stanford do to get those fish tagged. The Tag a Giant Foundation, like Chloe said, got started right here on the coast of North Carolina with Barb Block and Dale Britt and a couple of other local legendary captains. So it's really cool to see that over the years that program has remained strong and true to its Carolina roots and now gone above just tagging 
flew Fentuna, but now your team at Stanford is assisting the IGFA with tagging the blue marlin and tracking that species. So that's really, really exciting. Um, do you want to talk to uh, Dale or John or Patrick or anyone? Oh, let's talk to Dale if he's available. Okay. Yeah, I'll climb up there. You never know when things are going to happen. <laughs> That's the truth. So guys, remember, this is brand new technology that's enabling us to connect with boats live offshore. So you just watch John Sorry. fight the fish. <laughs> Chloe's climbing up in the tower right now to see if Dale is available to chat with us. Captain Dale Britt is a Big Rock hey, board member, and he is a legendary <laughs> captain. We are so excited to go to him and get the story on how their day has gone. Dale, how are you doing? How are you doing? Doing a lot better now than we caught a fish. There you go. And it's looking like better weather offshore today. Oh, the weather is awesome today. It's like day and night from yesterday. That's and we're awesome. Really happy about that, Chloe. Good. We're really happy about too. And that is that so Chloe got to put a tag in the moment she did it for the great bowling race. That's exciting work, Dale. We are so thankful for all the work that you've done with the Great Marlin Race and the Tag a Giant Foundation. And we do want to give a shout out to John Roberts as well for sponsoring those tags and Dale Britt. He does extremely great work with both of those organizations and is a legendary captain. You guys saw him bring in a 59.7 pound Wahoo yesterday. Probably the big one of the biggest ones we've seen in a while. So Dale, tell us about that fish that y'all caught yesterday. How long did it take y'all to get it in the boat and everything? Well, you know, we hooked the fish, Carly. And uh, when we hooked the fish, it started peeling off line off of 130. And uh, I called Randy and said, Randy, uh, the water is hooked up. Uh, you're not supposed to pull a hook up there unless it's a bill for the fight. So yes, anyway, it took a little while to catch the fish and the nice and fish. But when we caught the fish, I had to call Randy back and tell him that a lot of it ain't my bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call a wrong species. That's right. I gotta get back to work. I'll turn you back over. All right. Thank you, Dale, so much. Good luck. Go get another one. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. I know. Everyone's saying this is so amazing that we can do this. It really is, Chloe. I mean, you and Casey on the Inspiration and Harris Huddle on the Builder's Choice, you guys are kind of the first boats that we are trying this out on. All Jarrett Bay boats, too, not to mention. So we are so thrilled that we have the technology to put the offshore world into the homes of all of our fans and spectators. I mean, it's really going to change the world of sport fishing. If you can, yeah, just pan the camera around and show everyone what the conditions are like offshore. It definitely looks a lot better than yesterday. Yeah, it is beautiful. <laughs> yesterday was definitely a little tough. Okay, I'm going to climb down and see if, I mean, I'll see who's not super busy. And yeah, 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 no worries. And guys, remember, everyone on the boat, this is during a tournament. So there is millions of dollars on the line. So we want to appreciate, say thank you to everyone who has allowed us to touch base with them, talk to the captain, talk to the mate, talk to the angler, whoever it might be. We are so appreciative of them taking the time to do this because with millions of dollars on the line, everyone's a little high stress, a little high strung because any fish could change the leaderboard. So we do want to say thank you to Welders Thark, Inspiration, Builder's Choice for doing that so far. And we have a couple more boats in line this week. So we're excited to partner with them. And I think Chloe is going to try and get maybe Patrick the mate or John to come on board and talk with us. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? Doing well, Carly. How are you? Wait, I'm around. great. Great. It's so good to see you guys and hear that y'all released or tagged and released a blue marlin. Can you tell us about the size of the fish? Uh, the fish was about 300 pounds, and it was a uh, very healthy when we let it go. About a 15-minute bite. So we're hoping that uh, it'll go swim around the ocean and give us some good data. There you go. There you go. I don't have the latest numbers, but earlier in the day, the Grand Slam released two blue marlins. So if you guys can catch up to them, we, you might have a little leaderboard shakeup. Who knows? Might put you in the lead for the daily and get you on the board for the week. So that would be pretty exciting, Patrick. Tell us, how long have you been fishing with Captain Dale Britt? Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> Eight, eight. 
Awesome, Patrick, we're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Chloe, if you could maybe pass the other AirPod to him. How about now? Oh, you sound perfect now. So you said you've been fishing with Dale for about eight years? Yeah, it's been about eight or nine years. Yeah, yep. and they guys, they are the dynamic duo. Dale and Patrick together, they have released countless fish earlier in the year with other tournaments in the NC Billfish series. They have placed in the tournaments and and over the years too, I mean, released countless blue marlin, weighed in plenty of game fish and had a lot of action offshore. Patrick, if you've got the time, could you tell us about probably one of your best experiences offshore? Oh man. <laughs> Hard I, question. Uh, I, I fish on a uh, commercial fishing boat on my time off on this boat and we caught a thousand pounds of trigger fish once in about two hours wow yeah, yeah. for those that, that might not know what a trigger fish is can you kind of tell them the size of that compared to the fish that y'all are going after during the big rock uh trigger fish is a bottom fish and they you know they live about 100 feet 120 feet on the bottom of the ocean floor and uh it's a fairly very highly sought out um commercial fish and just that was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. But I don't know, maybe maybe Hatteras for offshore fishing last, uh, I guess it was early May. We had some really awesome blue marlin fishing. And um, clearly we uh, we still got a little mojo going on. Hopefully we can catch another one here. You got we're, that. We're, we're looking for a big one now. <laughs> there you go. So like Patrick said, North Carolina fishing the past couple of weeks has been off the charts. Yesterday, blue marlin are still hanging around yesterday. We had 42 blue marlin released, two white and two sails. So the bite is still hot. Fishing out of yeah. Moorhead City, Hatteras, anywhere here in North Carolina, you're almost guaranteed to see a blue marlin this time of year and in May. So we want to give a huge thank you to Patrick and congratulations on your release, Patrick. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing more of you, hopefully. That sounds like a plan. Hopefully at the scales later this afternoon. That fabulous fisherman's prize of over $700,000 is still up for grabs. So we're rooting for you guys. Hopefully we'll see you at the scales. Okay. You have a good one. All right. Bye, Patrick. Bye-bye.
fly here like we always do, of course. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back here to uh, our little studio set at uh, Big Rock Landing. Day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament rolls on. I've obviously got Henry Hinton with me. Thank you, Henry, for being hey here. Now. Good and, to be here. Uh, we're pleased to be joined now by Lindsay Parker. Lindsay uh, has a great connection to the tournament. Her grandfather, Dick Parker, was one of the founders of the fabulous Fisherman's Club and was around in 1957. And now uh, Lindsay and uh, her family remain in the car business here in Moorhead City and are one of our legend or our legend sponsor. I was going to say one of our many sponsors, uh, but Lindsay and her family hold a special place in the uh, history of Moorhead City and in the uh, history of the Big Rock Tournament. So, Lindsay, welcome. Tell, tell us what's new in the car business. There's always something new in the car business, always. But the Parker Auto Group, uh, Parker Buick GMC and Parker Honda, both of our dealerships are located in Moorhead City. And we are just excited to be down here. The energy is just awesome all week long. We always look forward to this event. We love the charities that are touched by the Big Rock and how much impact and good that does for our community. The Parker Auto Group was also excited to celebrate our 75th anniversary uh, last year. So we are just looking ahead to, to new and exciting things. We've got some great, that's right, on our koozies. We are, we're handing out bottled water and koozies down here. And again, it's just really exciting to be a part of this. What is, um, you know, with Honda, there's all sorts of new things out. And uh, so give us a little primer of what to expect from that, uh, from that brand. So one of the vehicles down here with us today is the all new redesigned Honda Pilot, tip to tail redesign, exterior, interior, six cubic feet, larger interior space, a few inches longer. You're gonna see a lot more room in that third row seat. And that is Honda's largest SUV to date. So that's sort of our flagship vehicle. And also moonroof, there's a few different trim levels that they have come out with, the Trail Sport. The vehicles themselves are much more rugged, and I think you'll be really impressed to go to go take a peek at that new vehicle. How's the inventory situation? Getting better? Getting better. It could be better <laughs> always, but it is getting better. Yep, and of course, if you don't see something on the lot at either of our stores, we are always happy to look into ordering it and getting your specifications just right. Awesome. We do have a truck down here from Parker Buick GMC. We have our Sierra 1500 with the Duramax diesel engine, which I would love for you to come crank up because the diesel engines these days are so quiet, you would not believe it. But it's got the magic tailgate that's a lot of fun. You can look at all kinds of fish being weighed here at the scales out of the back of that, the bed of that truck. So please come see us. We're here for a little while longer and we would love to show you either of those vehicles. Do you fish? I do not fish. <laughs> I have before, and I tell you, it but is you not, it is you not got, for the light it, of heart with this it's wind. It's in your DNA, though. It is, it is. So, again, <laughs> a, a special personal connection for me being here at the Big Rock with my grandfather helping being one of the, the, those that started it. So it's, it's incredibly special and touching. And I will say I was actually on the receiving end with one of the, the organizations I, I work with, the one of the PTOs at Beaufort Elementary School, and we were a recipient charity for some of the funding from this past year's tournament, where I believe over a million dollars was donated to charities. So it was really special to be a part of that and see it come full circle. Yeah, we. Uh, the, the other thing we were going to mention, you were talking about the family connection. We saw your fir your first cousin here, Parker Henry, a couple of days ago on the um, on the double B, mm -hmm. and uh, with his dad Keith up in the bridge so uh the uh the parker family they they uh they still know what they're doing in the fishing world that's that's for sure absolutely yeah but yeah we've got some other folks that are they're carrying the torch on the fishing Th side that of we things. do <laughs> that we do well Lindsay, it's always great to see you um you're a charming young lady we love having you and again uh, thank you so much for everything you do for the big rock tournament and what you do for our community i know you're um, well ensconced over there in Beaufort with the Beaufort Wine and Food Festival, which is a great event, by the way. Something yes, you, you really ought to take uh, take in if you can. But uh, Lindsay, one of the one of the great young young ladies, uh, business people here in Moorhead City, and we thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, you for thank for you. your help with the Big Rock Tournament. Thank okay. you, Lindsay. All right, we've got. Uh, let's go here to a couple of announcements. Let's get an update 
on the chasing A. That 61-foot Garlington has boated a Blue Marlin. Uh, their ETA at the dock is 445. That's what we're being told right now. And while we were watching Carly on the video and talking to Lindsay for a second, the Dunright, a 68-foot Viking, has boated a Blue Marlin. So we're going to have two more Blue Marlin here at the scales today on day five. Really turned out, Henry, to be a pretty impressive uh, fishing day. Very exciting stuff. 65 Blue Marlin caught and released offshore today. Wow. You know, we had uh, 100, I think, as of this morning. Yeah. So half of that again uh, we plus saw a, today. Uh, we saw a flip on the leaderboard. And we did. We did. What a dramatic moment that was as a sushi jumped into the lead. Anyway, we're going to regroup here, take a look at our leaderboard shortly. But know that the uh, Chase and A will be here about 445. And as soon as we hear from the Dunright, they have boated a blue mile, and we'll let you know. So enjoy yourselves here on the Moorhead City Waterfront. Another beautiful day here. Uh, those of you at home, stay with us. We'll alert you as things progress here on day five of the record-breaking 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament.
He's a legend. He's a legend. Throw him in the water. water. So let's start with your name and the boat name. John Duffy, fishing aboard the Den Boys this week. And what's the meaning behind the boat name? Big Doug, that owned the boat. Uh, Tommy's father, Tommy Hancock owns the boat. And, uh, Doug always used to, when Tommy and his brother were on the dock, he'd say, where them boys at? So. It's stuck. Start with the boat name. Dirty Martini. And what is the meaning behind this boat name? It's our last name, Chance Martini and Jeff Martini. Father, son team. What's the boat name? Which boat? This boat! <laughs> game keeper. What's the meaning behind the boat name? We keep game. What's the name of the boat? Business. What's the meaning behind this boat name? My grandfather, plenty of, many Vikings ago, um, named the boat Business because he'd always go away for work and people would ask where he was and he said, I'm out on business. What's the boat name? The Miss Y. And what's the meaning behind that name? Ed Holder owns the boat. Uh, his wife's name is uh, Miss Y, so the, I think this is number five boat for them named the Miss Y. What's your name? My name's Robert McGill. And what is the boat name? The boat name is Safari. Meaning behind the boat? Uh, we're big hunters, and it's just a pretty fitting name for that for us. Biggest superstition for you guys? Well, my son says it's bananas. No bananas on the boat, absolutely. <laughs> well, bananas are bad luck. Of course. Right? A lot of bananas on board? Yeah, bananas are fine. Yeah, you uh, fish the first day and the last day. I try not to be superstitious because that'll worry you to death. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? 101 pound wahoo and then a 400 pound uh, bluefin tuna. We caught a four pound mahi <laughs> on the first day and that's about it. What's the biggest fish you've caught? Mm, a king mackerel. How big was it? 500 pounds. Wow, that's the biggest king mackerel I've ever heard of. As a captain, it was an 1135 pound blue marlin in Ocean City, Maryland. And what's the biggest fish you've caught? Uh, mine. How much did it weigh? Um, I don't remember. Two, not two pounds. What song gets the crew hyped whenever you guys are out there and you haven't had a bite for a while? Um, any type of uh, reggae music. Either country or rap, so riding dirty. That get surprising, <laughs> not predictable. Paradise City, Guns N' Roses. Walking on the Moon by the Police. What is your favorite thing about Big Rock? Uh, all of it. What's your favorite thing about Big Rock? Uh, all the hype, just been here for so long. The hope that you might be that one this year. And what's your favorite thing about Big Rock? Uh, the chance to catch a big one. I just love the camaraderie. Love it the people. Uh, just having fun, seeing the community, um, going the way in, be on either side of the way in. Um, fishing, just the fishing part. Just, I love being here in Beaufort. I've been fishing this tournament since I was a little kid with my family and, uh, you know, to be able to come down here on a boat that we built and fish is pretty surreal. We are here at the Moorhead City Yacht Basin and you can see the guys that took a lay day are still hard at work. They are rigging some mullets right now that are going to go in the dredge and looking like a lot of work. How many of these do you guys think you'll be doing? We've got about 110 today that we'll do. That's awesome. you got to be ready for tomorrow and Friday and Saturday. What guys, what days are y'all laying and planning to fish? we got the next three. We're fishing the next three. There you go. We already took our two lay days. Awesome. Well, good luck the rest of the week, y'all. Thank y'all for letting us get a glimpse at what you're doing. Thank you so much. No Thank you. Hey guys, we are here again with the Outnumbered crew. This is Lauren Somerville. Lauren is one of the most impressive lady <laughs> anglers. Over the last couple years, I've watched her flourish from being a junior angler to now a lady angler. Lauren, tell us about some of your accomplishments. Yeah, so um, last week we were fishing in the Cape Fear Blue Marlin Tournament and this is my first year no longer in the Junior Angler Division. Um, so, you know, we obviously had a great week and I won Top Lady Angler, but you know, just out, over the past years we've seen a lot of fish and we've been very lucky and very blessed to be able to get all these bites, but you know, just Junior Angler has really helped improve me and helps me learn and it's a great, it's a great position to be in. And, 
great yeah. spot to learn people. Awesome. And the Outnumbered crew, can you tell us why the boat is called Outnumbered? So my dad, he grew up with three sisters and now he has three daughters. Um, never had any brothers, doesn't have any sons. So he's always been Outnumbered his whole life. I love it. I love it. And Outnumbered, you guys won the Big Rock, what year was it? 2021. Awesome. Do you remember yeah. how much that fish weighed? 512.4 pounds. And that's bigger than any fish that has hit the scales yet so far during this week. So who knows if they catch another one like that, they could take it again. For sure. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you. We're here with Mr. Terry. He is a NASCAR Hall of Famer. So Terry, we just want to ask you some questions about your career. What is the most memorable race that you've had? You know, probably the most memorable one would be the, the last one I won. Uh, it was in Darlington, South Carolina. And uh, I didn't realize that was going to be the last one I was going to win. Or I would have retired then instead of waiting four <laughs> years after that. But uh, but I ran my first race in Darlington. I won my first race in Darlington. And 23 years later, I won my last race in Darlington. So I hold the record, I think, for longest spans between wins and between championships, too. So, uh, But I, I was in the sport for a long time, just enjoyed it and loved it and uh, still follow it, you know. Yeah, that's incredible. So I'm not super familiar with racing, but was really impressed to hear that you are a NASCAR Hall of Famer. So for those that aren't familiar with racing, what's the fastest you've ever gone and what kind of car did you run? Well, you know, the last several years I drove for Hendrick Motorsports when I won my second championship and probably back during that time, I guess the fastest that we ran was, uh, you know, top speed would be about 200. The cars you know, are restricted some in speed with the rules and regulations and things. They, they don't really talk for them to get much over 200 because, you know, the safety uh, aspect of it. So that's, uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty average top speed at, at a lot of the tracks that run at. Wow, wow, that's really impressive. That sounds way too fast for me to be in the car with you. So that's impressive that you did that and that you were so successful. I mean, NASCAR Hall of Fame, that's, that's incredible. So thank you so much for talking with us. You're welcome, yeah. Awesome. And then now we're going to go to CP Charles Perry. He is an IGFA Hall of Famer. And from what I understand, he has wired the most granders and weighed in some as well. Charles, tell us a little bit about your career. Well, back in the old days, I started fishing for big fish in Australia back in 1970. Three was the first year, and the biggest fish I ever caught was that first year, which was 1,417. Wow. And I caught that on a boat called the Panawanica, and with an angler was Garrick Agnew, a very well-known man in Australia. Was it a black or a blue marlin? A black marlin. These were all black marlin on the Barrier Reef in Australia. And uh, through the years, I fished with um, quite a few well-known people, Captain Peter Wright and Captain Paul Whelan. And, um, a, a lot of different fishermen over there and, and I enjoyed working on the deck more than really running the boat. I've had my captain's license for many years, but I enjoy the... All right guys, it's time to go back to work here at Big Rock Landing. This is our first dolphin of the day in the game fish division. We've got prizes daily and weekly for all of the game fish, dolphins, tunas, and wahoos. Uh, this is actually a substitute boat, uh, the little outlier for the ocean stinger, from what I understand. I think these guys weighed in a 3.8 pound dolphin. Oh, hold on just one second. Got to stop and uh, pose for the first lady of Moorhead for just a second. These guys picked up a couple thousand bucks a uh, day or two ago, I think, as the uh, daily winner with a dolphin about that big. The day that 12 boats went fishing, they picked up a daily prize in the dolphin category. So he, it was how big? 3.8, yeah. All right, well, this one's grown. Five pounds here on the outlier. Got a lady angler here, Emily, Emily Marsolis, and Joe, let's just say Joe's the captain. Somebody have to help me with that one. Uh, 
You know, always, always nice to see uh, the young ladies show up here at Big Rock Landing. They've got a tournament all for their own as well. We just celebrated the 26th annual KWLA Lady Big Rock. And good job to the ladies on the outlier there, a five-pound dolphin, leading us off today after that electric moment just an hour or so ago where the sushi came in and took the lead on day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. So there'll be more to come, I'm certain. 255 boats out of 271 fishing today. So I'm sure we'll have lots of game fish activity. Again, we've got two Blue Marlin coming to the scales. Uh, we're expecting the Chasing A, uh, fished all over the world. First trip to the Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. They'll be weighing in a blue marlin caught by a 14-year-old junior angler. We just heard the story just a minute ago, and I follow that up with the Dunright out of Atlantic Beach. Uh, they've boated a blue marlin. They'll be in about 30 minutes later. So things are rolling on here. Just getting going good on day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. Stay with us as we bring it to you live here from Big Rock Landing.
Check, check. All right. You guys want to win something? Who wants to win something? You guys are not enthusiastic enough. I'm going back in the tent. <laughs> Who wants to win something? Come on. All right. All right, first of all, we got Les Collins from Collins Boats in Smithfield has given us some hats. Does anybody have a Collins boat? You do? All right, you got a hat. Where's Les? Les, we might need confirmation. Come on up here. You have a Collins boat? You don't have a Collins boat. Why were you raising your hand? Because you need a hat. What is your name? Matthew Langwood. Where are you from? Pikeville, North Carolina. Well, that's close enough to Smithfield. You probably do, Otison. What'd you buy from uh, Les? A Ranger bass boat. All right, here you go. Thanks. Wear it with pride, my man. All right, we're going to do a trivia question. Tommy, you might help me remember. I'm trying to remember what it was. All right, so Tommy gave me this question. This is a big rock trivia question. The first blue marlin ever caught, was it the Fabulous Fisherman? Yep, 19, Fabulous Fisherman 1957. Club, 65 years ago. Was caught on a boat called the Mary Z. Where was the angler from? Hometown was, of the angler. That was not too First easy. First blue marlin it? caught. That was not in so Moorhead easy. City, September 14, 1957. <laughs> I told you nobody was going to know that. Boy, that's tough. <laughs> you know we for anybody we anybody? forbade Google a few yesterday, what? didn't we? Not from Moorhead City, no. You know the rule out here, if you yell out an answer and it's wrong, you owe me $100. It's going to cost you. All right, anybody know? North Carolina, North that would Carolina. be correct. Where, you got an answer? <laughs> Y'all are just guessing. Beaufort. Not Beaufort. All right, what was that? Who said Who LaGrange? said that? Did you look, did you Google it? Tell the truth. You Googled it? Hey, well, look, Henry, uh, with, with this crowd, she I think she deserved to win. All right. Yeah. She Googled it. She was smart enough to Google it. What is your name? Ryler. Where are you from? You're from LaGrange. <laughs> oh, you're from LaGrange. Did you? Did you know? And, but you still had to Google it? <laughs> For crying out loud. <laughs> All right, you get a 107.9 WNCT, one of the world's great radio station, beach bag, clear bag, and you got a Collins hat in there, and I got some other junk in there. So enjoy. <laughs> All right. We just, we just got word that the uh, boat coming in crested uh, Cape Lookout about 10 minutes ago. So this is probably going to be hitting the no-wake zone up here in any minute. And so uh, don't go away. We're going to see a blue marlin. We just, by the way, we just saw a picture of this blue marlin. It looks pretty big to me, but they all look big to me. Tommy's the expert. Yeah, it's kind of kind of hard to tell, you know, <laughs> from a picture, Henry. Yeah. But anyway, Henry's absolutely right. We've got a couple of blue marlins on the way. Uh, we're expecting the chasing A here, uh, maybe 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. Uh, we've got their family over here with us. We're hearing some of the stories. The angler is a 14-year-old young man, uh, and apparently he's had quite a day catching a blue marlin, quite a day on the boat as well, and we can't wait to hear that story. But he'll be in first about 445 or so. 14-year-old junior angler catching blue marlin here today. And then the Dunright uh, out of Atlantic Beach over there ties up over to Eight and a Half Marina. They'll be along soon thereafter. Uh, Chase and A is in the Level 5 Fabulous Fisherman's Division. So if that fish weighs 500 pounds or more, we will write them a check right here on the spot for $739,500. I have some info on that. Ah, info on what? Unofficially, ah, the anglers on the boat are saying the fish is 108 feet, 108 inches. Ah, okay. So what? So that's going to be close, right? It's going to be close. That means it's going to be close. It could be 500, but it could may not be. be. We'll see. 
We we'll will see. see. Anyway, things are rolling on here. Thank you, Henry. Um, you know, we saw a game fish come in. There's a, a heated game fish competition every day here at the Scales. Uh, a couple thousand dollars available for a daily prize, $1,000 in second place, $5,000 for the week. Uh, that level seven dolphin winner take all might be a little tough. 59.3 pounds, Henry. Wow. $540,000 for that. That one might be a little tough to beat. But anyway, heated competition for the daily prizes with all the game fish. And uh, we'll bring it to you live right here on Big Rock TV. Those of you who are joining us here on the waterfront, enjoy another beautiful afternoon here in Moorhead City. A lot to do. Uh, plenty of places to go visit. Plenty of places to shop, eat have an adult beverage maybe, and of course, make sure you put the Big Rock store on your itinerary here for the afternoon. Go over there and buy some Big Rock stuff. And of course, all the money that you spend over there, those profits go directly to our charities. So stay with us here. We're patiently awaiting the Chase and A. They'll be here in just a few minutes. And of course, we'll have it for you live here, right here on Big Rock TV.
All right, Big Rock Landing gets another dolphin here today. I think I've got my story straight here. This was caught on the smallest boat entered in the tournament. This is on a 21 Parker. From our friends over there in the Parker booth. Boat built right here in Beaufort, North Carolina. It's interesting, you see these 80 footers pull in here and here comes a uh, 21 Parker outboard powered boat with a little dolphin. A little over three pounds on the Barber J. Again, the, the smallest the smallest boat in the tournament. There you go, the, par the Parker booth even erupted over there. There you go. Brian Hardy, our angler. Roy Crockett, our captain. Little dolphin, but a thrill nonetheless to show up here at Big Rock Landing on a local, another local boat built right here in Beaufort, North Carolina. And you can go see a uh, Parker boat down here in the water, if I'm not mistaken. They've got, a, I think it's a 29-footer down there. Beautiful boat. And it could be yours right here today, I bet you. So come on down if you're down here. You know, you want to wander around a little bit. There's plenty to do, plenty to see as we await more game fish. And, of course, uh, the chasing A coming in here in just a second. Hey, let's talk to... Uh, Let's talk to mom here, Henry. Come, 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 come on, come, come on. This is an ambush interview. No, it's not. I told, I told her exactly what we were getting <laughs> get, ready to do. Yes, get in here, get get, in here. there you go, there you go. She walked up and says she owns this boat. That's what she said. That's what she said. Is it true? With my husband and son and daughter. Yes. And, and we've given her shelter here from the from the sun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell us, you, you, you got a phone call, I imagine, from somebody today. Tell us how that phone call went. Actually, we heard from one of the girls, the stew on the boat, that my son was um, hooked up on a fish. We didn't know what it was, but it was big. So your son, your 14-year-old son, was in the chair. My 14-year-old son was in the chair from wow. start to end. Yeah. Exciting. How, 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 do, you, do you know how long it took him to uh, to bring it in? I don't. Um, I think it was about an hour. Um, it, I just I think it announced on the feed it was 2.06, mm -hmm. and I think we got a phone call at like 2.50, 2.55 that they landed it. So who called and how did that call go? It was all through text, so we haven't really talked to them at all. Um, I texted my son, and he, he just wrote me, and he said, I did it. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to cry that's again. Awesome. Yeah. That's um, awesome. And I said, I'm so proud of you. I'm going to cry. He said, I already am. Oh, that's so. awesome. Good so, so the emotion, why? You know, you. He just loves fishing so much. And um, they went out the first two days and were so discouraged. And this morning, something came and snapped one of their outriggers. So the morale on the boat was a little low. So when this one came on, we were all so excited. And the fact that Carson had it just made it 10 times you know, better. No, that's great. That's great. This, this boat travels all over the world. Uh, been fishing in Cabo and Costa Rica, and now we're just delighted to have them here for their very first Big Rock tournament. How, how about that? Where, where do you guys live? Uh, full time, we live in upstate New York, but we also have a house in Florida, so we uh, like to travel all over, go fishing. Yeah. You guys are into it, aren't you? <laughs> My son is. Yes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> there you go. Well, mom is mom is number one fan apparently. Yeah. Well, that that's great. Should be. It, no matter what happens, congratulations. Thank, thank you for joining us. You're welcome to stay right here. The boat will be along. You'll have a front row seat for sure. All right, well, we're waiting for the Chase and A, that 61 Garlington. Uh, fishes all over the world. This is their very first Big Rock tournament. Young, uh, young man, 14 years old, in the chair from beginning to end. What a great story. So they'll be along shortly, and, of course, uh, we'll continue uh, weighing in game fish as they come in here at Big Rock Landing. Day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament rolls on.
Okay, welcome back here to uh, to our little perch here at Big Rock Landing. Got Henry Hinton with me again. Henry, while we uh, wait here just the last few minutes for the Chasing A to come in, let's uh, take a look at that leaderboard earlier today. 484 and a half pound blue marlin on the sushi takes first place. An electric moment finally here. It was really something very emotional as well. But 16 pounds shy of 500 pounds and $739,000. Yep. yep. Will, will this fish get it? We'll but he's see. still got over 2.7 million reasons to be happy oh, about yeah. where he sits right where now. Where he today. is right now, yeah. Um, another interesting thing today, uh, the Marlin Fever, a uh, 63 Jarrett Bay right out of Moorhead City here, had the best fishing day unofficially in any Big Rock tournament, catching and releasing five blue marlins. Wow coming from nowhere to jump into the lead in that release division, uh, you know, looking at almost 180,000 uh, bucks in one day, pretty yeah. much. So, how, what, many, how many guys go out there and never do five in their life? Uh, not many. I think, I think the Moorhead <laughs> record is seven, if I'm not mistaken. It's been done two or three times yeah. uh, a long time ago. And then, of course, a couple of years ago, the Ava D., rang up seven if i'm not mistaken in one day what a day for them uh we just saw while we while we were talking to uh ms moser here uh waiting for the chase and a the uh keeping it real came in weighing a 10.8 pound dolphin to take the lead in that category for the day fishing was very good today 255 boats fishing um 65 blue marlin caught and released today uh, by far the busiest day of the tournament and of course, we've got two boats coming in. The Chase and A be along here shortly, uh, followed by the Dunright out of Atlantic Beach. So, so just about the whole field went out today. 271 boats in the tournament. Only 16 didn't go out, I guess. Yep. Uh, 255 yep. boats went out today. And of course, with the weather yesterday and Wednesday, we expected today to be a big day, but tomorrow as well, Tommy. Yep, yep. And who knows, you know, a lot of people just have to fish on that last day yeah. and if they're they'll do if they have to lay on uh, uh on a good fishing day they want to be there on that last day and that's probably the case there all right so stay with us here the crowd is starting to build uh we're going to need some enthusiasm the louder you cheer here the heavier that fish is going to be i promise you <laughs> and the quicker you'll get to see it at the same time so rest up here a little bit we'll do the same and the chasing a will be here Shortly, we'll see if uh, maybe they will be the uh, lucky guys to take the level five fabulous fisherman's prize, seven hundred and thirty-nine thousand five hundred dollars, still up for grabs. I see the family over here is a little nervous about that. Are you nervous, Mama? <laughs> and her fourteen-year-old son was in the is chair. The angler. Is yep. the angler on this fish? All right. Well, they'll be along shortly. We'll have it all for you right here live on Big Rock TV. All right, we got another junior angler here to welcome to Big Rock Landing. Another outboard powered boat. Not at all surprised that they're here first. Let's see what we got. I think our leader in the clubhouse for today is 10.8. You just saw that a few minutes ago. 
Not gonna quite do it, but at 8.2 pounds, our junior angler there, it's great to see him show up at Big Rock Landing. Of course, there, there you go, thank you. In, uh, in about a month, we're gonna do this again. The Big Rock Kids Tournament will take center stage and you will see uh, young folks like this, uh, like this young man, a steady parade of them for three days as they bring uh, their game fish to, uh, to Big Rock Landing. So here's our junior angler, Jack Bass. That's a name made for a fisherman right there, Henry. Let's see, Brad Chilton, our captain on the fishy business. An 8.2 pound dolphin moves into second place, I believe, for the day. Yeah, it's always, it's always great to see uh, young people here make Big Rock Landing. Oh, Rocky Mount, there you go. Good looking boat there on. You know, a pile of horsepower, beautiful CV boat. And I think our, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got the drone shot of the Chasing A coming in. Looks like they've just made the turn they are tied up right there at Portside Marina. They're going to be there in about two minutes. They're on the other end of the waterfront. They will be right here. We'll get the fishy business out of here. And y'all be prepared to welcome the Chase and A to Big Rock Landing. Anybody want to make any guesses on how big this fish is? We heard it's unofficially 108 inches. Any guesses? If you get it right on the nose, maybe I'll give you one of Les's hats. How much? 432? I think you're light, but we'll see. 502? Who said that? All right, we'll see. All right, guys, here they come. The Chasing A is just uh, just hitting the uh, Big Rock Landing here. To our east, you guys on the deck have got a front row spot over there. Looking good, a beautiful 61 Garlington from New York and Florida. Guys fish all over the world. This is their very first trip to the Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. Got our junior angler, 14-year-old Carson Moser in the chair. Yeah, come on. 
There you go. Let's welcome the Chase and A here to Big Rock Landing. Y'all stay, stay right there. Just stay right there. Those of you that have been with us previously today, you kind of know what's happening here. There you go. Mom and Angler right here. A big hug from uh, Carson Moser for his mom. Big day for these guys today. So we're going to get them tied up. Randy and George will hop into the cockpit, do a little paperwork, and uh, get some measurements, and we'll see what she looks like. Ms. Moser told us earlier they snapped an outrigger, and boy, they snapped an outrigger, all right. You can see it right up there where the uh, blue marlin flag is. Not, not only is it snapped, it's gone. So they've had a, uh, an interesting day. That'll be a good fish story, I think, at some point to hear about. So Randy and George are getting ready to get into the cockpit. We'll get some measurements. Are y'all sure uh, that boy's 14 years old? That's a big 14 a strapping, year old. A strapping young lad, <laughs> a strapping as young they lad. say. Carly's got something for us. So we hadn't, we hadn't really talked about this either. We've been focusing on that $739,000 prize. But if you win it and the tournament, you're going to win a little over $3.5 million. Yeah. All right, let's go take a look here. Just while we're waiting to uh, get it out of the cockpit, let's check that leaderboard. Obviously, we're looking for 500 pounds. We'll write them a check right here on the spot. Third place, 463.7 pounds. Second place, 470.2 pounds. And you saw it earlier today in first place on the sushi. The number you're looking to beat right now for first place is 484.5 pounds. All right, here we go. All right, guys, here we go. Let's let them hear it. Come on, they need a little bit more encouragement here. Now, folks, that is a very nice blue marlin. Caught right here on day five of a record-breaking 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. Remember to take the lead, 484 and a half pounds. You gotta be better than that. And 500 pounds, we'll write them a check right here on the spot. Okay. All right, not gonna do 500, but 479. 479.8. 479 how about that? Our 14 year old junior angler. <laughs> Sneaking right into second place. And a very nice consolation prize of $412,000 right here.
with one day of fishing left to go and one more fish waiting to be weighed in on the done right. The chasing A moves into second place. Henry, the leaderboard has been crumpled today. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna regroup here, take some pictures, get the whole family together, of course, and uh, do a little celebrating. And then we'll hear from, uh, we'll hear from our junior angler at some point. I'm quite certain maybe the captain as well. We've already heard from mom. Another electric moment here on day five as the Chase and A moves into second place on day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. Sure. Hey guys, real, real quick, I've, I've got Carson's father here with us. Uh, what an exciting day. Tell us about it. It is, and he definitely deserves it. He fishes 24-7. Any chance he gets, he fishes. He puts in the time. He loves it. It's his favorite sport, and I'm just extremely proud of him. He's a great, great young man that I couldn't be prouder of. Well, Greg, jump, jump, in, jump in there and take your picture.
All right, we've got uh, the angler, 14-year-old Carson Moser with us. First of all, you're the tallest 14-year-old I've ever seen. When's your birthday? July. So you're about to be 15. Yeah. My grandson is about to have his 14th birthday in July, yeah. and uh, he's not nearly as tall as you are. Tell us about your fish. I know you got to be excited. Yeah, it came up on the left long, and he whacked it once, then came in on the teaser, and then he, came, he, he went right back to the left long, and then we had him on. How long did it take to get him in the boat? Like 45 minutes. Yeah. You were in the chair the whole time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was that like? It was intense. We, we fought big fish before, but he, he bit hard, and he kept on going. Is this your first blue marlin? No, no. How many have you caught? A good amount. <laughs> wow. 14 years old, he's caught a good amount. That's great. Yeah. But have any of them uh, had the potential to bring 400 and some thousand dollars? Not at all. This, this is probably the biggest fish in my life right here. Well, you guys have moved into second place. One more day of fishing. Are you going back out tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Going to go after that 500-pounder tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to get a bigger one than this, hopefully. All right, good. Congratulations, Carson. Good to see you, man. Great stuff from Carson Moser, 14 years old.
Oh, they probably give you a beer walking down the road. <laughs> they might even give dad one. <laughs> what, whoever, no matter whoever asks a question, if you look right, keep your eyes right here, we'll that'll work best on all of them. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Everybody good? First thing for you is your first names, last names, spell them, and Carson Moser, C A R S O N M O S E R, and Angler. Robert Moser, Carson's son, father. Son of his father. <laughs> Just relax. Yeah, I know. And you guys are locals here in Hornets? We are not. We, uh, we live in upstate New York. Oh, wow. Long travels to get to the tournament. How has it been so far? How long have you been out and stuff? It, we had. We had uh, the last couple of days. We took the last two days off. We fished on Monday, correct? Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday. It was, uh, we didn't, we had a, we didn't see anything. So this was quite exciting. We almost missed her once. She came up, like Carson will explain, and we turned the boat around and she took three different whacks at it and finally hit the left long and she stuck. And how does it feel to, you know, see all these people here, you know, cheering you guys on as you bring your fish in? It's pretty crazy. Like I've seen it on online. It was nothing like when you see it in person. Yeah, first time. Awesome. He's only 14 years old, so I got to say he was a pretty amazing <laughs> feat for him. Describe the fight. What was the fight like out there? Um, it was not that bad. He brought us way down on our backing, and then we took it back inch by inch, and we finally got him up to the boat. He stayed down deep for a little bit, but when we got him up, we had our guys on the leader, and we knew he, we had him. How long of a fight was it? Like 40, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Okay. No, first time in the tournament. The boat has been over in the Pacific for a little bit, so it's our first time fishing the Atlantic, so we're back over here. Great first impression. Yeah. Does <laughs> this make you want to come back for next we year? Will, we will be back next year. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be back. Without a doubt. And thanks to all the people here. Everybody's been great. What a great little town. Everybody's been amazing, so thank you. Can't, can't do much better than that. Father and son... The Moser family right here, electrifying the crowd on what an amazing day, day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. The boats left them here at the dock, but they'll find their way home, tied up real close by. So we are now awaiting the Dunright, that 68 Viking from over in Atlantic Beach. That 500 pound prize still available. George, I think we're talking about 20 or 30 more minutes on that one. All right, stay with us here. What a day it's been so far. More to come, obviously, as we await the done right. The Moser family here winding down their celebration. Obviously, a lot of smiles around. As we get ready to weigh in another Wahoo, let me check that leaderboard. 59.7 is the largest Wahoo of the week. Second place, 50.4 pounds on the Marquesa. Let's see what we got. This is a nice Wahoo one way or the other. All right, we got a new second place Wahoo here at 52.2 pounds. Really nice looking Wahoo there. Beautiful boat as well. So here's the story on our Wahoo, our new second place Wahoo for the week. Obviously the biggest of the day so far. On the best medicine, Casey Crawford, our angler. Zane Alberry, our captain. Looks like it might have come off of that Freeman, that beautiful catamaran sitting over there, spectacular looking boat. The whole crew getting in here on the act. We talk about it all the time. Wahoo, a great eating fish. If you get a chance at one of our local restaurants, I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed, that's for sure. So, 
Good looking crew here on that Freeman Boat Works. Boat, beautiful boat, great looking fish. Well done here at 52.2 pounds. So a little update on our timing. We just heard from uh, some of the Waymaster crew. About 30 more minutes on the done right. And of course, we'll have it all for you right here on Big Rock TV. All right, looks like we got a uh, another big dolphin coming in here. Need to check the leaderboard on that for the week. 59.3 pounds in the lead there. 42.9 in second place. This is another Wahoo caught on the Maggie. Matt Cable, our angler. Randy Bryan, our captain. Local boat ties up in Atlantic Beach. A very nice Wahoo moving into second place. Again, those prize money, those daily prize dollars, $2,000 for the largest game fish of the day, 1000 for second place, $5,000 for the largest one during the week, and 3000 for second place in that division. Now here, now this is a dolphin right here. This is what we were looking for. Again, 42.9 pounds is second place. And 59.3 is first place. All right, this is a 43.3 pound dolphin. And they are going to sneak right into second place. They're gonna knock the ocean lifter out of second place in the dolphin category. That's all it takes. Let's see, and this is on the Maggie as well. Again, one of the, uh, one of our local guys, Randy Bryant and his family, 
They know exactly what they're doing, having won numerous tournaments here in the area. This is the Maggie, a 43.3 pound dolphin. Charles Roberts, our angler here for Captain Randy Bryan, of course. Moving into second place on day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. Tell you what, there's an awful lot going on here today. Henry, we've had a new leader, a new second place Blue Marlin. We've got... Okay, George says he made a mistake. I just, George, I'm just reading off of the board. That's all I'm doing. I didn't write the board. I know, but I'm just reading off the board. So we'll blame it on George. That was on the Labrador, right? Don't blame it on me, bro. George is now pointing at me. Okay, we're going to fix it. Here we go. All right. Okay, so we got the right angler in Charles Roberts. We got the right weight at 43.3 pounds. We obviously got the right guy in the pitcher, Captain Wade Ficklin on the Labrador. Another very successful uh, boat operation here in Moorhead City. Uh, Wade Fickling, an outstanding captain. Knows how to catch him, that's for sure. That 43.3 pound dolphin landing them in second place here for the week and taking the top spot as of 5.30 or so in that daily competition. Again, we spoke about the uh, wahoo and how well they eat. We call them dolphins. You'll see them on the menu as mahi, mahi. This is what they look like right when they come out of the water. All right, day five rolls on here. We're waiting for the done right. 68 Viking again ties up in Atlantic Beach. And we're looking for that third place weight of 470.2 pounds. Right on up to uh, our leader. We saw Charlie Pereira and the sushi at 484 and a half. And of course, that 500 pound prize still awaits the fleet. All right, a quick update here on the Dunright. We've checked their entry form, and they are not entered in level five in the fabulous fisherman's level. So that prize lives on another day. Lives another day. So and the, uh, the rest of the fleet needs to know that, that tomorrow we could see somebody win maybe the whole thing, Henry. It'd be about 3.5, 3.6 million You live dollars. another day. And, you know, you, you made an interesting point earlier. I didn't know this, but if it's not if, if there's not a 500-pound fish, 
this year, the $739,000 rolls over to next year. Into the same category for next year. Wow. So you're looking at $1.6 million, and, and then the word gets out that you got that uh, that available to you. There'll be a pile of people coming in here. All right, Henry, switching gears here real quick. Our Ocean Lifter, we've seen them earlier this week. In fact, they just got bumped out of second place in the Dolphin. Come back with a 5.7 pound Dolphin. <laughs> we just broke the news to him. Henry, you hate to break, break bad, uh, bring bad, bad news to the fellas, but uh, that was our formerly second place dolphin boat right there. Just got bumped by that 43.3 pound dolphin that we saw. Did it end up being on the Labrador? Is that what it was? It's on Wade Ficklin's boat, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, guys, a lot happening over here. Of course, the done right is, is on the way. Yeah, we're on the phone here with the boat. So right, they'll, uh, but they'll be along here shortly, one way or the other. They think they're about 20 minutes out, according right. to um, one of the well, anglers Regardless, on the boat. we've got a big crowd here to welcome yeah. them to Big Rock Landing. And of course, uh, while you're here on the Moorhead City waterfront, go enjoy yourself. It's a great time here. A lot of excitement going on on Friday evening. The scales will stay open until 7 o'clock, according to the rules. And um, you know, afterwards, go enjoy yourself here on the Moorhead City waterfront, those of you that are here. Lots to do, plenty to see, plenty of places to go and grab dinner or a drink. And of course, make sure you stop by the Big Rock store right across from Big Rock Landing. All the proceeds, all the profits there go straight to our charities here in Moorhead City and Eastern North Carolina. So day five rolls on. We'll take a little break here as we await the arrival of the Dunright and uh, see what they've got for us. We'll come back with a leaderboard check here in just a few more minutes.
All right, then let me take a break every once in a while. And we are now back. The Carolina Real Men, a 13.6 pound dolphin. Angler Jonathan Bickett, Captain James Coon. Another nice dolphin, 13.6 pounds. Again, there's a spirited competition going on for those daily game fish prizes. And of course, it's uh, a great thrill for our anglers to come up here and have their picture taken right here at the First Citizens Bank Way Station at Big Rock Landing. Here's another dolphin on the Carolina Real Men. 17.7 pounds. I'm waiting for the app to update so we can keep track of it. There's a lot going on. Obviously, we know the uh, Biggest dolphin of the day, 43.3 pounds. Obviously not going to get there. That was caught on the Labrador today. Captain Wade Fickling, of course.
All right, Henry, we're going to welcome Crystal Hesmer in here for a minute and talk about our My Hometown raffle for a $10 ticket. You could win $20,000 given to the charity of your choice in your name. So you do not have to be from Moorhead City or even North Carolina. Wherever you are from, you can buy a ticket from Crystal. We got some little cards here. It's easy, really easy to do. And literally for a $10 contribution you could turn that into twenty thousand dollars for your local fire department your local elementary school your local church your local university your local little league whatever as long as they are a 501c3 organization now i've got my friend john ritchie who started this little um challenge deal several days ago with 250 dollars that we turned into like two thousand dollars just like that so uh, John has sent me another text, and he's, he's on the war path over there. And I, I want to apologize to the good people of Swansboro. I said he was from Swansboro. He's actually from Cape Carteret, and he called me out on that. Um, so John, I know you're listening, and uh, I apologize to all the fine people of Swansboro for putting you in there with them. But anyway, he's, he's calling out the Redfish Madness Group down in Cape Carteret, and... Uh, I'm sure he'll shoot me another text here in a second. And he also called out our good friend Ed Petrelli, who's a former winner. That would be nice, get some former winners to come in and, uh, and buy some tickets. So maybe he'll shoot me a text here in just a second. But what a great response we've gotten for this. People seem to be really excited about it. And our drawing is going to be at 4 o'clock tomorrow, right here. We're going to do it right here. All right, Crystal, you say what you want to. Well, we're just very excited about this. We've had a, a great response. Um, it's a $10 ticket. You can be the hero in your hometown. It does not have to be in North Carolina. It could be anywhere in the country. You can certainly give back to anything. Any any 501c3 uh, $10 ticket can win you $20,000. Wouldn't that feel wonderful to give something back to your community? Um, we're right here. Dylan and I have clipboards, and we're going to take the cash. Um, you can also do it online. You can go to thebigrock.com under charity and enter your credit card. We also have a QR code. If you have Apple Pay, you can do it quick and easy. I'll be happy to give you the card if you'd like rather do it at home and not here. Um, but it, it, we are giving it away tomorrow at 4 o'clock here at Big Rock Landing. So Tommy has done 250. I did 250. Josh in the truck did 250. So if you're in business... I mean, what a great opportunity to win $20,000 and then may be able to donate it to something in your community. So raise your hand and we'll come to you if you're interested. You'd also, you also don't have to spend $250. You can spend $10 because the tickets are just $10 each. Yeah, we've got several challenges going on. Fence companies, was yeah. that was one of the ones that, that popped yeah, we up. Three Henry, fence we've companies, got, yeah. Let's see, we've got, we've got hair salons in on our challenge. <laughs> Uh, and of course, last night we had a we had a great moment. Our winners from uh, what was it, 2017, on the runoff, the 60th tournament, came in and made a great contribution, gave us back their little bag of silver dollars that they won uh, in the 60th anniversary tournament for winning that level five fabulous fisherman's prize. So that was awful nice uh, of the um, of the crew of the runoff. Uh, Marty Hyatt was with us, Matt Hanley, of course, and his, uh, and his children were with us, his sons. What a great moment that was. So that's what the Big Rock's all about. It's not just a fishing tournament. We have given away $1 million locally for the past two years. You heard me right, $1 million given away by this tournament to local charities in each of the past two years. And I would say we're on track to do that again, Crystal. All right, well, we are awaiting. Yeah, and Crystal's going to come around. She's got these little cards if you want to buy a $10 ticket and uh, jump into the uh, to the raffle and raise win $20,000 for raise your, your hand. If you want a $10 raffle we'll ticket, come out here. 
twenty thousand so dollars you can win and give to something in your community for a ten dollar raffle ticket. Anybody t got any takers? Y'all been spending all your money on beer, hadn't you? Got one over there. Crystal is one way down. Dylan. Dylan, way on the end down there. All right, thanks, everybody. They'll keep coming around. We hear the boat is like five minutes out. We're about five minutes out from the Dunright coming to the uh, dock. They just made the turn at the port, it looks like. Henry, while we uh, wait for the done right, let's just check those. Let's just check those weights here. You saw it here just a few minutes ago. The Chase and A came in to take second place, 479.8 pounds. The Sushi in the lead, 484.5. And your third place weight, that's the one you're looking for. Anything over that, they're going to be in the money. 470.2 pounds. The Dunright is not in the level five category. So that prize for the first 500 pound fish lives on for tomorrow. I'm going to have to go back and look in the record books, Henry, I, to see when it was won on the last day. I, I didn't think it would make it to Thursday, I, but I it's going to make it to Saturday. So I we'll surely see. didn't think it would make it till Saturday. Uh, and maybe if somebody up in the office can tell me how many boats uh, will be fishing tomorrow, we'll uh, pass that along. But regardless, tomorrow is the last day, and uh, the fleet left with uh, days to fish. We'll be in pursuit of uh, Blue Marlin, 
Hopefully we'll see one of those 500 pounders. If not, the prize money will roll over to next year. And boy, if that happens, you'll see a record Big Rock tournament next year for sure. All right, so let's get ready to welcome the uh, Dunn right here to the scales as day five of the 65th annual Big Rock tournament rolls on to a conclusion. Quarter to six, and we'll be with you here until the action stops. Of course, the scales will be open for game fish until seven o'clock. We've already seen that leaderboard move around a little bit as well. The Dunright will be here in just a second. We got eyes on the Dunright on the throw. Well, you, you got here at a pretty good day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big announcement today at the camp, too. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, as promised, here comes the Dunright. This boat is owned by Derek Dunn who's in the concrete business in Greenville. His son, Peyton, is on this boat. I know some more of the guys. I see I recognize Corey Scott up there. All right, everybody, let's hey, hear right it. Here. Let's hear it and hey, welcome right the Dunn right here to Big Rock Landing. Obviously a good day of fishing today. One blue marlin in the cockpit and one blue marlin release. We'll get them tied up here. Y'all are familiar with the drill by now. We'll get the boat situated. Randy and George, our waymasters will hop in the cockpit We'll do a little business and uh, we'll take a look at a blue marlin caught today by the Dunright as day five of the record-breaking 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament comes to a close. There they go into the cockpit. I'm going to go have a look. Unofficially 111 inches. It's the biggest one we've seen the last few days. Okay, guys, while we wait, remember third place is 470.2 pounds. Second place, 479.8. And first place, 484 and a half pounds. 
The 500 pound figure does not count here in the level five division, but a 500 pounder would obviously put them into the lead. So we want to hear you cheer for them when they, uh, when this blue marlin comes out of the cockpit. Help encourage our boys here to pick her up. Okay, here we go. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Man, this is almost prime time on Friday, day five. All right, 425.3 pounds. Not going to make that third place mark, but a beautiful blue marlin nonetheless. Great day of fishing any way you look at it by the Dunright from Atlantic Beach. That is a qualifying blue marlin, of course, according to the Big Rock Tournament rules but it is not going to bump the C student out of third place. Again, the C student came in this morning looking at winning about $2.8 million. They have now been bumped down to third place, a $275,000 consolation prize at the moment. And folks, I'm gonna tell you something, tomorrow is going to be quite a day. That 500 pound level five fabulous fisherman's prize is still up for grabs. And there will be quite a big fleet out fishing tomorrow. All right, there you see it, 425.3 pounds, a qualifying blue marlin on the Dunn right. Patrick McGlawhorn, our angler, Derek Dunn, our owner and captain. Going to sneak in there. We'll have some pictures made. Not going to move that leaderboard, but still you saw an awful lot of excitement either way from the crew. A chance to weigh in a blue marlin here at Big Rock Landing. We're going to take plenty of time to take some pictures. Maybe we'll sneak in a few more game fish. Who knows? Scales will remain open until 7 o'clock for game fish. And obviously, this is our last blue marlin of the day. All right, well, stay with us as day five comes to a conclusion here. We'll be back with a wrap up shortly. And of course, be with you tomorrow for a one day shootout for level five.
If you're friends with this family from Greenville, there's going to be your Christmas card right there. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Of course, you can see an awful lot of excitement amongst the family members. Again, being able to weigh in a fish here at Big Rock Landing, a thrill of a lifetime for a lot of folks. And of course, I mentioned to you, Tommy, on this boat, the NCAA all-time saves leader. How about it? Corey Scott right over there and his son. Uh, Corey was playing for Keith LeClaire at ECU and had 23 saves in one season, which is still the NCAA How about record. That? I don't think he could do it today, though. <laughs> He may have had 23 beers out there, though. Oh, Henry, now. <laughs> I'll ask him. I'm just, re just reacquainting with a lot of people. I've had a for about 20 years. All right, guys. Yeah, typical pandemonium here after a uh, blue marlin weigh in. I've been told we got a nice tuna fish coming in here, too, so we'll see our first tuna of the day. Don't see too many of those. But we'll get a look at a nice tuna fish here in a minute. Anyway, enjoy the uh, enjoy the atmosphere. If you're down here on the Moorhead City waterfront, for those of you at home, stay with us. I'm sure we've got more to come. Another tuna fish coming to the dock. We'll regroup, take a look at our leaderboard, and uh, get ready for tomorrow. A one-day shootout for level five, that first 500-pound blue marlin to the dock. All right. Yeah, so we're going we're to hop in here uh, and do about three interviews at once, maybe. Uh, we've got our angler here with us today. Great day of fishing, number one. And uh, we're going to let uh, our friends from Channel 7 take the lead here. I'll ask the first question, which is going to be, what is your name? And spell it for us here. Um, I'm Patrick McAlhorn, uh, M-C-L-A-W-H-O-R-N, from Greenville, North Carolina. Take us through it. A big day for the Greenville guys. Yeah, big day for us. We had a good uh, release this morning and then uh, got on this one a little later. A uh, good hour, hour and a half of it. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty tough there for a while. A good crew over here. Thankful for the Duns and all these, these guys that I'm just really fortunate to fish with. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, just blessed to be here. And Big Rock's just first class. We, we love doing this. And, and I'm just really happy to be back in here finally with one. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Tell us a little bit about the fight and, and how getting it in the boat and all of that. Yeah, well, you know, just uh, it spooled uh, several hundred yards, I think. Uh, I don't know how much, but it was, uh, yeah. We, uh, we about an hour and a half worth of, uh, of, of a fight there and um, got to the leader a few times and kept kept going down, want, didn't want to get to the boat. So we had to fight that for a good good 30 minutes once we got the, to the leader and uh, then finally uh, looked at it a few times, decided she was going to she was gonna come with us. So, yeah. How many times have you been here? Uh, this is, this, I believe, the sixth year I've done the Big Rock. Yep. Have you brought in a bigger one than that? We have. That's the first one I've been able to weigh. Uh, caught, caught my first one last year, and uh, this is the first one I've, I've been able to do this. So, 
Yeah. So take us a lot through, of fun. Yeah, take us through the emotions of. of yeah, what just like well, yeah, un- unbelievable. I mean, speechless. You know, when you when you do that and uh, get into the boat and, and decide to to bring it on, it's uh, man, just a, a lot of fun. You know, I mean, just a lot of cheering, a lot of a lot of you know, a little bit of a tear, a little bit of a. A laugh and a and a celebration, and then just coming in and hoping for the best. And uh, just like I said, fortunate to fortunate to be able to do that with these guys. They're they're good as gold, and we we love doing it. So, yeah. Congratulations. Man. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're on the board. <laughs> We're on the board. There you go. That's what it's all about, right here at the Big Rock. Guys, families, and friends fishing together. Thank you for your time. Congrat congratulations to you. Hey, hey, have you got another? Have you got another day? We got another day. Okay, all right. There you go. So they've got one more day. Go try it again tomorrow. And really, that's how it works here at the Big Rock. A lot of family, a lot of friends, a lot of celebrating going on one way or the other. Even though you don't move that leaderboard, still quite a lot of excitement. So, all right, stay with us here folks on the Morehead City waterfront. Y'all enjoy yourselves. We'll uh, check that leaderboard here in a few minutes. And uh, the Dunright will take off. And we'll get back with you here for those of you watching at home with a little wrap up and tell you hopefully what to expect tomorrow. So stay with us as day five of the record-breaking 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament comes to a close here at Big Rock Landing.
I saw 65, and uh, that was actually like Peyton's first football. All right, Big Rock fans, let's say goodbye to the Dunright as they leave. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations again. Well done. A, a great day of fishing, no matter how you look at it. One blue marlin at the dock and another blue marlin release. And they live to fish again tomorrow. They've got one day left with the rest of the fleet. We'll be looking at a shootout tomorrow for that 500 pound fish in the level five fabulous fishermen's category and of course if it happens we'll be right here live at big rock landing and we'll bring it to you a lot going on over here so we will uh, check our leaderboard here shortly a few minutes after six and uh, i think we got a few more game fish to weigh in from what i understand So let's take a little break here and regroup. Let me see what's going on, and we'll be back here with you in just a second. All right, I just sold some more raffle tickets, and uh, I've gotten some some text here. My buddy John Ritchie from Swansboro, excuse me, from Cape Carteret, says uh, Tommy Mac Holtz pledges $100 from Mac Daddy's. Give him a shout out. You've got a shout out, John Ritchie. I've also gotten word from uh, my good friend Pat McLaughlin, McLaughlin Chiropractic. He's matched our challenge. He'll have us a check here tomorrow for $250. Got my kissing cousins in Raleigh, Nancy Heathcote and Nancy Thompson, watching me live on Big Rock TV. She says, Tommy, how can I buy a ticket? So Nancy, and Nancy, there's your shout out. Sure do appreciate all the kind words that you send me during the week of the Big Rock tournament. Just passed out a few cards over here. Uh, the local director of the Christmas cheer for Carteret County says, I'm gonna buy a ticket and I'm gonna give all the money to Christmas cheer here in Carteret County. So that, that's really what it's all about. I think I got everybody covered from all of my texts, from all of my emails. And of course, we thank you for uh, your support and joining with us and buying a few raffle tickets uh, make yourself a hero in your own hometown. That's the, the name of the game. Let's see, what else we got? Surfer's Healing. So this is one that came up yesterday. Okay. So they, have they bought tickets? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, just got word. An organization called Surfer's Healing has bought some tickets. Rice for Beach. 
in Wrightsville Beach. Billy, you know those boys? Surfer ceiling.
Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's get ready to welcome the real love here. This is a 28 privateer, Jeff Rugenhill, our owner and captain. And this guy is a tuna fish catching machine. In fact, he can catch just about anything. A, a great fisherman, a longtime competitor in the Big Rock Tournament. Currently in second place in the tuna division, he's got a 36.6 pound tuna that he weighed in earlier this week. And just checking that leaderboard, 42.8 pounds is our leading tuna fish right now. So we've had uh, all three game fish species come to the dock now today. All great eating fish. You see tuna fish on the menu around here. It was probably caught by somebody just like Jeff. And again, we'll wait and see what they've got. $5,000 available for a weekly prize and $2,000 as a daily prize. Real love already uh, picking up some change from the tournament and uh, going to win some more right here. Apparently they lost a nice 60 pounder a couple days ago too. But of course, that might also be a fish story. Who knows? So there you go, a nice tuna fish. Lady angler again. Again, this is the real love, a 28-foot privateer. They absolutely know how they're, what they're doing, no question about it. <laughs> Lady angler here. Again, they weighed in a 36-pound tuna earlier this week. And the leader in that category right now, 42.8 pounds.
All right, that's not going to do it for the leaderboard, but a 26.7-pound tuna fish. They're going to pick up $2,000 unofficially for a day's work. That'll buy quite a bit of gas even in that boat. So here you go, Ashley Mason, our angler. On the real love, a 26.7-pound tuna. Somebody fix her hair. There you go. There we go. Again, Ashley Mason, our angler here. Jeff Rugenhill, our captain on the real love. 26.7 pound tuna fish today. Hey, uh, come on, mom and dad. Everybody in the picture. Come on, mom. There you go, another picture worthy of a Christmas card. We're going to make some more memories right here. As day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament comes to a close, my guess is that's probably going to do it for us here on Big Rock TV. We'll take a minute and regroup here, check that leaderboard, and we'll uh, fill you in on what's happened today and get you ready for tomorrow right here on Big Rock TV.
All right, well, we might have a little excitement here as day five comes to a conclusion. We're getting ready to weigh in a dolphin, apparently. And we're talking right now the leading weight in that category is 59.3 pounds. So it's going to have to be a monster dolphin to knock 59.3 pounds out of first place. That fish was caught on the skip hook. Captain Mike Allen, angler Aaron Moody. And we're talking $539,000 in prize money. So I think if I had uh, the winning dolphin, I'd be here too. So let's see what we got. This is on the Carolina time. I'm going to have to check my memory, but I think this was the uh, Dolphin winner last year. Looks like Captain Jay Blunt up there to me. It is. All right, I did confirm with Captain Jay Blunt, they were the winner of the Big Dolphin category last year. Quite a moment for Jay and the crew of the Carolina time. They got another dolphin here. Jay says it's probably not gonna bump our leader, but maybe a daily prize. Right now, it's going to have to beat 43.3. The Labrador decked one earlier today. Second place is 17.7. Here we go. All right, there's your second place dolphin for the day, 31.6 pounds. Yeah, let's hear it for Captain Jay. At least they can pay for a tank of gas today, if nothing else. Maybe. So here we go. A 31.6 pound dolphin on the Carolina time. Michael Jones, our angler. Of course, Moorhead City's very own Captain Jay Blunt running the Carolina time right now. Again, this was your winner in last year's winner take all dolphin category. Jay, you know the drill. Big guys in the back, little guys in the front. All right, a very nice dolphin there, 31.6 pounds. Hold on. Hey, Jay. Y'all, this is Captain Jay Blunt, the captain of the Carolina time. 
Tell us about uh, the memory standing here last year, winning the whole thing. That was pretty special. Uh, not not the same way this year, but uh, happy to be here. Always a great time. Big Rock is one of the premier events of our year, and the staff and the volunteers, everybody always do a great job. So just to come in and participate is a, a great honor. Yeah, you're very kind. Tell us about sea conditions today. Well, we picked up 68 miles from here and had it right on our nose coming home. But uh, in fact, I was right next to your son when I left. and uh, He went to Hattersoak. I know. He was doing well. I mean, and and he's having dinner at the Marlin Club tonight. <laughs> and, and you're going to have dolphin, uh, you, you know, on the grill maybe. we we have some tacos. We said, no, but no, uh, it's always great to be here and just be a part of everything. We love it. Thank you all for what you do. Yep. You got another day tomorrow? Yes, sir. Sure do. Uh -oh. Go get this thing cleaned up. You entered in level five? We are. It's wide open. Yes, sir. That it is. Thank you. Jay. Thank you, Jay. Good, good going today. Yes, sir. There's your winner last year from the Carolina time, your winner take all in a Dolphin uh, division last year. Captain Jay Blunt from Moorhead City. Got one more day left. Go track down that 500-pound blue marlin. Win $739,000 doing it. All right. Let's see. We'll see where we are here. Oh, we got one more coming in. Ah, okay. Here's a 20.6 pound dolphin. Somebody's going to eat well tonight for sure. All right, this is a 20.6 pound dolphin caught on the full circle. Morgan Taylor, our angler. Robert Gallahan, our captain. Smiles all the way around, of course. You heard Jay Blunt say what a privilege it is to land here at Big Rock Landing Way in a fish. All right, good, joy, good going, uh, Carolina time. We're closing in on that 7 o'clock hour. So let's go over here. We'll take a look here in just a second on what's transpired for the day and get ready for tomorrow. Stay with us here as day five of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament comes to a close. All right, we're back with you here for a little wrap-up. Day five of the record-breaking 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament has come to a close. That's going to do it for us here on Big Rock TV. What a day. Lots of activity here at the scales, a lot of excitement. Uh, we saw the leaderboard change in the Blue Marlin division, the sushi from up in Oregon Inlet, Captain Charlie Pereira came in a 484 and a half pound blue marlin to take the lead, followed closely by the Moser family on the Chasing A, 479.8 pound blue marlin to land in second place. Uh, great family celebration there, enjoyed seeing that. And of course, our leader going into this morning, the C student, 
now bump down to third place with their 470.2 pound Blue Marlin. Big news of the day, the rest of the big news today, the 500 pound level five fabulous fisherman's prize is still available. The fleet will be in hot pursuit tomorrow and I expect we'll see uh, some blue marlins come to the scales tomorrow as that prize of $739,500 remains available to the fleet. The other big news today, the Marlin Fever sets a tournament record catching and releasing five blue marlin, winning a daily prize and jumping into the lead picking up unofficially right now $178,500. Lots of other game fish to the scales today, but uh, day five has come to, an, come to a close, and that will do it for us here today on Big Rock TV. An exciting conclusion awaits for, to, for us tomorrow as uh, day six, the final day of the 65th annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament awaits, and we will bring it to you live right here on Big Rock TV. See you tomorrow. <laughs> 572 pounds and some change, that's gonna do it. Yeah.